In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the seasonal typical price to improve your trading. Whether you're a day trader, a swing trader, or a position trader, the seasonal price is a useful thing you have to know about. I'm gonna show you how you can use Excel to calculate it yourself, and I'm gonna show you exactly the results that I got from applying price filters, technical analysis, and combining it with a trading strategy. Stay tuned. My name is Mark from tradingform.com. I'm a trader and back tester who analyzes trading strategies. The spreadsheet shown in this video has already been shared with my members group. If you want more information about that, check out the links below this video. Okay, let's start by looking at how I have calculated this. Feel free to skip ahead to the results, but this analysis is super easy and you could do it yourself. So first of all, on the left here in yellow, I have the QQQ, which is our base price data from 2000 to towards the end of 2021. Now I've calculated two columns. The first of these is trading day of the year, and this is the concept that I'm exploring in this analysis. So the trading day of the year, if you can see in the formula bar here, it simply goes up by one every time we had a trade, have a trading day, and it starts again in each new year. So trading days of the year exclude weekends and holidays. So we normally get about 250 or so. Now percentage change is calculated on a close to close basis as a percentage, as simple as that. Now what I've done next, I'm going to demonstrate very quickly. Now I'm going to highlight two years worth of data as a demonstration. 2000 and 2001, and this is exactly what I did. So I'm highlighting all the data in these two columns, clicking insert, clicking pivot table. If you haven't used a pivot, a pivot table before, this is a really easy demonstration of how to use them. I'm gonna put it into a new worksheet, click OK. Now trading day of the year, we want as our row. Percentage change, we want as our value. I'll make one small change to change that to average. Change the formatting. And there we go. We have the average for each of the trading days of the year. Day one, day two, day three, etc. The average over those two years. Now, what have I done with that? So I've done exactly the same thing. I've taken a block of data up to each of these years because we don't include information that we know now in 2021 for a back test using data from 2016. Not gonna help us. So each of these years has only got data that would only be available at that time. So I have done it by sticking pivot tables one next to each other. You can combine them, that's a perfectly possible way of doing it, but I've kept it really easy. Now, what have I done with that information? Well, I've drawn it into a new table here. And this just takes the data that you saw on that previous page. The trading day of the year and the average for that day. Okay, this next part here, which I will just highlight so you can see there's a small difference. What I've done here is I've rebased each year. So, just as an easy way to look at the data. So the start of 2016 starts at 100, 2017, etc. So when I've rebased it, it means we can put it on a chart like this and it makes sense. They all start off in the same place. Let's get to the exciting point. Here we are looking at the results. So this is what I'm referring to as the base case in this analysis. You remember these charts looking at them again every time they are pointing upwards we want to be buying and every time they're pointing downwards we want to be in cash or neutral so back to the results here you can see they're pretty decent we've got underlying market here going upwards so pointing out the two key metrics for this analysis average trade expectancy per day now this is obviously a function of the average trade expectancy, which is the percentage gain or loss per trade, and the number of days that it is open. So 0.14, and we can compare that to a typical day. 
for the NASDAQ QQQ of 0.1. So it's showing green, which means it is higher. The second key metric is the MAR ratio, which I really do like. It is a function of compound annual growth rate divided by maximum drawdown. So it's taken into account those dips like the one we saw here in 2020 when we had the COVID crash. It's taking those into account. So MAR ratio is compared with the MAR ratio of the underlying. Right, so our base case scenario, I've got lots of different things to show you and compare this to. So firstly, what would happen if we added a smoothing to the price trend? Now, the logic behind this is our typical price trend is not precise. It's going to be quite jumpy. So we're going to add a smoothing to that. I'm using a simple moving average that has been rebased. So we're going to keep our peaks and troughs in the same place. Back to our base scenario again. What's the next thing that we can test? Well, why don't we contrast buying whenever the selling whenever the price turns lower? to selling after a fixed number of bars. And that's what this is doing here. And you can see immediately our average trade expectancy per day increases to roughly double the rest of the time. Now I'm sure there's some outsized gains you can see on the chart here. We were going parabolic in the recovery from 2020, which coincided with a seasonal evidently coincided with a seasonal strong point. Close after just one bar. Well, why don't we try this? So this is the beauty of having all our data in the spreadsheet, in our model, and then we can test it, we can play with it. We can test it to destruction. We're not trying to optimize it here. We're trying to find something out. Have we got something that's useful and tradable in the future, not in the past? you can see typically what we would expect if we trade if we keep our trades open for longer higher net profit our trade expectancy per day is dropping but we're getting higher net profit so there is a trade-off there and one that's worth being aware of the next thing that I'm going to look at is what other ways have we got to make this signal from the typical price more tradable. So the first thing, the obvious thing that occurred to me is let's have a price based filter. I mean a current price based filter. So we're not just basing it from basing our entries and exits from historical data from years ago. We're using something that is current. Most basic, most obvious indicator is a simple moving average. And that's what I've used. You could use an EMA, you can use stochastic, RSI, MACD, whatever one you like. But I'm using something based on the current price. So the first thing, the obvious thing that occurred to me is what about if the price is greater than the simple moving average? And you can see I can scroll through some simple moving average filters here. And we're getting some reasonable results here but I've got another filter here and this is for when the price is lower than the simple moving average and this was pretty interesting so let's go very short let's say a three period here you can see here we're still getting these big gains in 2020 uh, let's make it a bit longer let's say a 13 period you can see here average trade expectancy per day has increased. My ratio is holding up, say 21. Average trade expectancy per day up to 0 0.29, 33. So we seem to be getting some sort of mean reversion effect going on here. And it's interesting, you can see a lot of the trades were came from here, came from this period in the recovery from the COVID crash, but still they came and they had to be taken. So what else could we do with this? Let's just have a quick look. What about if we applied it to close after a fixed number of bars? 
Well, it's pretty dramatic in terms of average trade per day. Less so in my ratio, but average trade expectancy per day is dramatic compared to the underlying. So, still pretty decent if we extend it here and worth being aware of. So, there we've done two filters. You could filter it with whatever indicators you like. But it's just showing that there, there is other ways to look at this. Let's go back to the base case again. So there we've done two analysis. I've looked at the base case and I've looked at two different ways of viewing that. Either closing when the typical price turns lower or after a fixed number of days. Now one thing I haven't done at all yet is applied a profit target or a stop loss. So for me to do that, what I'm going to look at is more of a complete trading strategy. Now, this is based on the 3 and 13 EMA strategy that I tested and produced a video for a couple of months ago. There's a link there if you want to have a look at that original video. So I'm going to check this. And you can see first results are a little bit underwhelming. But that's because we're doing something slightly different here. So I'm going to need to take this close off because it does not fit with it. And we're going to have to have some other way of closing our strategy. So let's say close after 20 consecutive bars. See, already we're starting to get something. We're starting to get something a little bit more reasonable. Now, we used a profit target in that strategy. Oh, we could test one again here. We can test the stop loss as well. See, we've got greens here again. We can see using a profit target and a stop loss is always going to be a bit of an interplay. Got a high profit for a high profit factor and a high percentage of winning trades, nearly ninety percent. Let's try some different things we can just get rid of the stop loss. There's different ways to look at it and I always show these on my spreadsheets. So we can use an alternative to the stop loss, a hard stop, what I call the strength close. So this one here is only effective when the price is, when we've got a losing trade. So this will get us out of losing trades after just two consecutive bars of this amount of gain, daily gain. We've used typical price. We've looked at the base case scenario and there were some interesting results. Don't forget, all we're using is historical price data. We're not using the current price at all in that scenario. Then we tried adding a filter and we got some interesting results with that as well. Particularly, we were able to increase some of the metrics, the average trade expectancy in some scenarios. In other scenarios, we got a better Ma ratio. So again, that is interesting result. And then finally, we looked at combining the typical price. So the typical price is still active when this trading strategy is on with the 3 and 13 EMA strategy. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love doing seasonal analysis. Now, if you want more information about anything that we've done here today, check out the links below this video. And for more information about testing, about trading and analyzing the financial markets, please go to tradingformed.com.